Let's learn all about eye tracing and match cuts in motion graphics and how that makes your audience stick with the journey. Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and today we're inside of After Effects looking at some cool motion graphics techniques about uh, eye tracing and match cuts. Now match cuts is a term from film which basically means that the content of your composition uh, matches visually and in position and scale and things like that with the content of the next shot. In motion graphics we use this combined with eye tracing where the, you, the audience follows the movement of the uh, MoGraph to um, lead them through the journey and to link otherwise unlinked visual assets. Like for here, for example, this yellow circle into the white square, into the blue triangle, into the eye, into the text. Um, there are two parts to this, the eye trace and the match cut. So we'll talk about both of those in today's tutorial. Um, but firstly, a word from this episode's sponsor. Wondershare Demo Creator is a quick and easy screen recording and editing software, perfect for capturing tutorials like this video, gameplay footage, or presentations. Just open the software, hit record, and off you go. You can even annotate, highlight content and your cursor during or after filming, which gives great flexibility. It also comes with a bunch of pre-made MoGraph transitions and title cards for quick editing. And there's all sorts of great features to help elevate your creations past the usual screen recorded content. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can download the software for free now using the link in the description or comments, and there's 20% off the paid subscription for that. So go check it out and get creating, but for now, back to the tutorial. So the first part of this tutorial is eye tracing. And what this essentially means is um, your motion graphic should lead the audience's eye through the journey of the content that's on screen. What I've done here is isolate the um, MoGraph that we've done and use this kind of circle to indicate where the viewer's eye is being dragged by the content. Now, you want basically a continuous path through your motion. Um, unless you're specifically trying to break that journey. Um, because if, for example, you suddenly jump from the top left to the bottom right corner, it's going to make your audience stutter. Even if it's just subconscious, it's going to make them break that flow. So that is eye tracing. You use match cuts to help with the eye tracing. And what a match cut is, is basically the, the point where that content changes from the first to the second set of content. Here, for example, we have um, our, our very simple beginning to our animation here. The ball backs off slightly, follows the path around. So there already is our path of motion scaling down before cutting straight away to this white square. So you can see that in this match cut, I have placed the white square very closely to where the yellow circle ends. And it continues, this is important, the momentum of that previous shot by uh, ending very fast. This frame starts very fast and slows out or eases out, which means when you do whip through to that content, it feels like a natural motion. The same thing going from this square through to this rectangle here, when it cuts, it stops spinning, eases out, and drops into that blue triangle. The blue triangle then opens up uh, with this path, this wavy path behind it, which then cuts to the shape of the triangle in the next shot. But importantly, the upwards motion of this blue triangle here, although your eyes are more towards the top of the screen, the opening of the triangle leads your view back to the center where the eye opens up. But to aid that upwards motion, I've also made the eye itself drift up entirely. Uh, slightly as it goes up, but also the pupil and iris inside of the eye goes up before moving down towards the center and cutting towards the next frame, which then has the uh, the word eye in the exact same position. So you can see three supporting movements there before it cuts to the next section. This next part is very simple. The path of the text changes um, and match cuts with the rest of it. And then when it scales up, and moves back to the center to bring the viewer's eyes back to the center. It just changes and keeps that cuts right in the middle. And then the last bit is just exactly the same, another match cut where the full title um, takes the, up the same space as the previous word cuts. So let's talk about how to actually do this. I have a tutorial composition here, which is just a 1920 by 1080 composition with a background in it. Uh, this background is just a solid with the four color gradient effect applied on top. And we're just going to do something to the similar to the first shot in this um, animation. So I'm going to grab, for example, a circle. And I'm just going to give it a fill, this yellow fill. That'll do nicely. I'm going to drag it out like so. 
and I'm going to pop it in the center of our screen using the align composition, like so. And we're going to want to animate position and scale for this. So P shift S will bring up position and scale. And we're just going to keyframe position first of all. So let's move over, say, 20 frames. Now, obviously, in the introduction, this was synced to music as well, which really helps with that punchiness of it. But this just goes to show that you don't really need it. Um, let's go to 20 frames and just move it up a little bit, like so. And now we've got this straight movement going from up to here, but that's not really the path that we want. So we can select the pen tool and click on our path, which gives us a handle. And we can use these handles to drag out the path of motion that we'd like. OK, so now we've got something like this. We don't want it to start in the center. I want it to start a little bit further over. So I'm just going to grab my selection tool, maybe have it start up here and it's going to then move around to the center. So to do that, we can just drag our handles until we get a path of motion that we're happy with. And I want it to end on a pretty much straight upwards movement there. So now we've got Boom, something like this, okay? But principles of animation, um, our ball would anticipate this movement. So I'm just gonna go over to say frame five and I'm gonna grab my selection tool. I'm actually just gonna move it so it backs up slightly before it starts moving. And if we zoom in again, we can just adjust our handles so that it overshoots that just a touch. So now we have our ball moving backwards, anticipating and going, but it's all on linear keyframes, which looks absolutely rubbish, <laughs> frankly. So let's just work on the position, tweaking this a little bit, bringing it down like so. Okay. Uh, let's select all of our keyframes, hit F9, go to our graph editor by clicking here. And if your, your graph doesn't look roughly like an M, it's because you're on your value graph, not your speed graph. Uh, and we want it to go from fast to slow. Uh, slow to fast as it anticipates this movement. So as it backs off, it's going to start off slowly. But then speed up as it goes into the next movement. OK, so that already looks a little bit better. Boom. We now want here this movement to kind of match that. And then we've got that nice woof, whipping into it motion backing off and then whipping through. OK. So that's a nice bit of motion there. Let's add some scale to that whilst we're at it. Um, let's start it off a bit smaller, maybe say it's 70%. By the time it backs off to here, let's have it grow to about 90, as if it's like rearing up. Oops, I haven't actually keyframed those. That was my mistake, sorry. 90% there, 70% on our first keyframe. Have it back up as it rears, and then as it whips around, let's just keyframe 90 and 90 again now. Squash and stretch, another animation principle. As this backs up, um, <clears throat> this probably wouldn't show too much squash and stretch, but it definitely would as we're whipping through the fastest points here. And you can see the dots, the small dots on this um, line here, which indicate the frames. So I know that from about here, it starts to speed up. So I'm going to unlink my scale and keyframe. I'm going to find the point where it starts to slow down, um, which it doesn't, of course, because we're just going uh, straight into a fast whip, as we can see from our position keyframes. In fact, we can make it even faster by pushing it like that. OK. Just to get that extra whip in there. So it starts to speed up around here now and just continues to speed up. So on this last keyframe, I'm just going to stretch the vertical so that as it starts to move fast, boosh, we've got um, our ball stretching along that. Now, you might need to rotate so that the top of your ball follows the path and then keyframe that. So for example, if we bring up rotation here, because we're stretching the vertical section, we're going to have to make sure that it follows our path like this. So by the time it reaches there, we just got a little bit of the stretch moving in the right direction as it speeds up. Boom. Very nice. Okay. Now we've just got our ball here that just stops in midair at the moment, but this is where our match cut comes in. And I'm just going to use a null object for the sake of this tutorial. And that was control shift alt Y as the shortcut there for this null object. 
I'm just going to position that over the ball. I'm going to link this object to the null object uh, just so that I can move this around as I please and it will just move everything that we've made. Okay, and I've done that so that I can choose to reposition the ending point of this ball here. And bosh, looking pretty good. So at this point, we are just going to cut both of our layers with Control Shift D, which will split them and then just hit delete to get rid of them. We can do the same thing, Control Shift D with our background, but we're not going to delete it. Uh, instead, we're just going to change the colors. Now I could just do this quite simply with a hue shift. I have a shortcut which allows me to press control and space to open up a um, floating window, uh, which is just effects console by Video Copilot, if you'd like to download that. All it does is stops me from having to click this panel, wait for all of my effects to load and type it in there. Um, so hue slash saturation and drag that onto our background. And I'm just going to see what color looks best. If we maybe hue switch to a nice blue like so, darken it up a bit and then we can see that match cut there. Okay, now I'm just gonna drag out our shape by one further frame. And we're gonna cut at this point here because we need that last frame on there as well, okay? So we're gonna cut here. I've dragged out a frame further than we need so that I can draw my rectangle and I'm gonna make it a white rectangle. And I'm just gonna, with no layers selected, I'm just gonna draw a rough shape that is in roughly the same place. It doesn't have to be exactly the same place, just roughly. Pressing open square bracket will push my layer over there. And now that I've lined those up pretty much close enough, we don't need those anymore so we can cut them off. Now we have our shape cutting into the next shape, but we need to continue that momentum of movement. So for that, we'll need position, first of all. So I'm gonna keyframe the position, move over say 20 frames because that's how much we used in this initial movement here. And I'm just gonna pop it up a little bit. Like so. Let's grab those keyframes, hit F9 for easy ease. Go to our graph editor and we can just move these over. So we've got complete 100% influence moving down to 0% influence and speed. And that's because the end of this graph's movement here was 100% influence or near enough. I think we did about 90 or so. Um, if you wanted to, you could push that all the way, but you probably don't need to worry about that too much. So let's take a look. And there's our first match cut looking pretty good. But we noticed we had this curve going in. So if we were thinking about the momentum of movement here, if it were to go straight up, there'd still be some of that energy pushing it sideways, which is why we have that square rotate out. So if we now hit shift R on this layer, which we will rename now that we've got a couple of layers, square, circle, and circle, control. On the square layer, I'm just gonna click rotation like so. And I'm gonna go over a few more keyframes. I'm gonna give it a full rotation plus 45 degrees. I'm gonna hit F9 on those and I'm just gonna drag like so to see what that looks like. Good, but it's rotating the wrong way. So um, we can go to negative one. Oops, I did that to both the keyframes there, my mistake. Um, so I want that to be negative one and 45, which makes it spin in the opposite direction before coming to a stop, which is great. But I quite like when the rotation extends a little bit past the position, just so that as it settles in, and if you wanted to, you could start having this come back down for your next uh, match transition. So again, we'll come through to the keyframes here. And we'll just push this one in a little bit so that the um, influence is on the same. So now it's going to go up, really hold its position, really hold its position, and then just start to speed up as it comes down. But we'll push that rotation even further out and then like that. Perfect. Apart from we just need to quickly tweak this to remove all of its influence so that it starts at full speed, slows down, and then starts to drop. And there you can see the power of a match cut. I mean, it's a little bit slowly for my taste. I'm just going to grab everything and hold Alt whilst dragging these keyframes. And that's just going to compress them. And we can compress the whole thing down to 20 frames so that everything finishes in 20 frames worth of movement. Perfect. Okay, let's trim that so we can watch it loop.
And as you can see now, we've got our perfectly match cut and eye traced movement. And all we did in the original that you saw in the intro was more of the same. Yeah, it goes from a triangle to a circle to an eyeball, etc., etc., to text, just to prove that this can work with pretty much whatever you want. So hopefully you found this useful. This is a really simple and powerful technique to help guide your audience through the journey of your motion graphics. If you've enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, etc. Uh, it really helps the channel and uh, go check out some of my other works as well. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching and I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Top. A colossal thank you to my level two and above members. WN62, Memo Sign, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ralika M, Ian Costello, Deshant Singe, Lone Wolf 16, Starry Tichi, Katmar, Wembembo, Rob V, Jason Carl Ruddy, JK Digital Creations, The Sorcier, Da Vinci Goel, MP, Dima Zuev, and Vola Furs. You guys are super lovely people, and I am ever grateful for your patronage. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.